Okay, hey, welcome back. Um, this is 4.2 rules and the mean value theorem. So before we can kind of uh, uh, work with the critical numbers in order to find the maxes and mins, we're going to need the mean value theorem. But in order to get the mean value theorem, we need the rules theorem. So it's kind of what this section's all about. Uh, we won't be working with maxes and mins just yet, but we will get there in the next section. I think in the previous section I said we would say we, we would get there in the next section, um, but then, it, uh, no, it's a section after this section that we actually worry about the maxes and mins. Okay, so anyways, we'll start with Rolls theorem. Okay, so number one, Rolls. Okay. And uh, visually, it's it's pretty simple to understand. Um, let's let's write it out in words first, though. So I think it used to be theorem 4.3. We'll just put it at that. Okay, so we want f to be continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on an open interval. So let f be continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b. Um, if f of a equals f of b, then there exists at least one number C uh, in the interval from A to B such that F prime of C is equal to zero. Okay. Okay, so let me show you, I, I, I think we'll leave the proof to the book and I'll kind of show you the, the uh, um, the picture of the proof, <laughs> proof picture. Okay. And they can get very rigorous about proofs, especially if you become like a math, a real math person. Um, doing pictures is not going to be what they want in the end. You know, they want a rigorous step-by-step uh, -step written out proof. But uh, this this is good enough for us in teaching it. Um, I think it'll be good enough. So the, the picture is, okay, so the first case here we have A and, and B, and then F of A equals F of B. Um, the first case is where the function is just a straight line, okay? And in that case, certainly F prime of any value C, any X value in between A and B, uh, the derivative there will be zero because it's a horizontal line. So we note, in this case, f prime of x equals 0 for any x in the interval from a to b, because it's a horizontal line. Okay? So this is like case 1. Um, then case 2, uh, I'll sort of combine them together because they work in the same exact way. Um, either the function is going to go uh, above um, f of a, or it's going to go below f of a. Right? So again, let me draw the picture going from a to b, and f of a equals f of b. Okay, so it's uh, continuous, and what I'm saying is either going to go above or it's going to go below. So this one does a little of both, right? So if it goes above, um, then because of the uh, extreme value theorem, there's going to be uh, a max in that interval. Okay, There has to be some sort of max in there. Um, the max won't be at an endpoint because this point is, you know, whatever it is, let's call it C. Um, because we presume that it's it's gone uh, above f of a, uh, f of a can't be a max. And you know if the graph goes below, the f of a also can't be a min. Okay. So what are we saying? Um, I'm saying that uh, there's a max in the interval from a to b, and uh, it will be a, a relative max. Okay. So if if you have uh, maybe I should say relative maxes 
occur in open intervals. Okay, so I don't know if I made that clear in my original definition in the previous section. Okay, so again, what do we have here? We have uh, f of c, there's going to be a max in, in this interval, and I'm saying it occurs at, there's going to be a max because of the extreme value theorem. There has to be one. It's not at the endpoints, okay, because we presume that f of c is going above um, f of a. Uh, so it has to be on the inside of this interval from a to the b, and maxes that occur inside of open intervals are called relative maxes. And then uh, we know that uh, if f of c is a relative max, uh, c will then be a critical number. Okay? Uh, that was one of our theorems. Uh, if c is a critical number, so we have that, uh, we note, uh, what, did, what did we just note? That uh, f of c is a relative max. which implies f of, uh, well, uh, c is a critical number, implies uh, c is a critical number. And then uh, do you remember what critical numbers are? Critical numbers are the places where either the derivative does not exist or the derivative is equal to zero. And we said that this function is differentiable up, up at the top there. This thing is differentiable on that open interval. So it can't be the case that the derivative does not exist. Okay, so because f of x is differentiable on this open interval, um, f prime of c will have to equal 0. Okay? And that's exactly what the, the number we were looking for. It has to be the case that the derivative here, um, the slope of the tangent line, will be 0. Okay, so um, that's pretty much the idea in pictures. You can read the proof. Uh, but what it comes down to, ultimately, um, so the, the big picture, I guess, if you didn't follow the proof. Um, the big picture is that if you have a function that's continuous and differentiable from a to b, and its endpoints are exactly the same, so f of a equals f of b, um, there's going to be some point in there where the uh, tangent line to the curve is equal to zero. Okay? So the slope the tangent line to the curve, the slope of the tangent line to the curve is equal to zero. Okay. In other words, f prime of c here equals zero. Okay, so anyways, uh, let's do some types of problems that you would see. So determine whether a Rolle's theorem can be applied. So um, if it can be applied, then find that c value such that f prime of c is equal to 0. OK. So let's take a look. f of x equals x squared minus 2x all over x plus 2. And we're on the interval from negative 1 to 6. Okay. okay. So first, the thing has to be continuous on that closed interval. And is this continuous? The only place that it's not continuous is where the denominator is equal to 0. Um, that number is not in our, our uh, interval. So yes, it is continuous. It's continuous everywhere except negative 2. Negative 2 is not in that interval, so yes. Um, then secondly, is it differentiable in this interval? Um, so I need to find the derivative. Okay, so low d high minus high d low.
And again, I could tell um, the only place this thing's going to have issues is at negative 2 again. Right. It's just going to be irrational functions. Rational functions are continuous everywhere except where their denominator is equal to 0. All right. So the only place it's gonna, it would have a problem potentially is at negative 2. But again, negative 2 is not in the interval, so yes. It is. Uh, uh, thirdly, we need to make sure the endpoints are the same. So let me maybe scroll over here. Thirdly, f of negative 1 is 1 minus, it'll be like plus 2 all over negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 3 over 1 is 3. And then I'll get f of 6. 36 minus 12 all over 8. Uh, that would be 24 over 8. Okay, so we're good there. Yeah, we got it all. All three criteria are fulfilled. So now we have to find the c value. Okay, so I'm going to need the derivative anyway, so I might as well keep on going here. Okay, FOIL, first outer and last. So it's 2x squared first, outer, minus x, inner, plus 4x. So plus 3x, minus 4, minus x squared, plus 2x. And then that's all over x plus 2 squared. Okay, that'll equal uh, 2x squared minus x squared is 1x squares. 3x plus 2x is 5x's, and minus 4, all over x plus 2 squared. And then I could probably factor it, I hope. Otherwise, I'm going to have to use a quadratic on this guy. Uh, nope, we're going to have to use a quadratic. Okay. So uh, I'm looking for c values where this thing is equal to 0. Um, uh, so if you wanted to, you could replace the x with a c, but it doesn't really matter. Multiply both sides by c plus 2 squared, um, and that will give me c squared plus 5c minus 4 is 0. And then I'm going to need the quadratic formula, so c equals plus or minus uh, b plus or minus negative b, actually, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. It seems like 5 is wrong for some reason. What did I do wrong? This should be 4. That's right. 4x minus 2x is 2x right here. So that would be 4x right here. I apologize. This will be 4c. This will be 4c. And then this will be negative 4 plus or minus 16 minus, okay, so that, that's better. Um, let's be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 16 is 32, all over 2. And this will be negative 4 plus or minus 4 root 2, all over 2. And then that will be negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 2. Okay, um, looking back at the interval, negative 1 to 6, uh, if you go negative 2 minus 2 root 2, that's not going to be in the interval. It's going to be less than uh, negative 1. So the only one that will work will be the negative 2 plus 2 root 2 for our c value. Okay? So hence, our c value is equal to negative 2 plus 2 root 2. Okay, okay let's look at another. So f of x equals tan x on the interval from 0 to pi. Okay. So uh, first off, um, we need to check continuity issue. So is it continuous on uh, the interval from 0 to pi? And no, right? It's not. If you look at the picture, tan has discontinuities wherever cosine is equal to 0. And the picture actually looks like this. So at pi over 2, there's a huge discontinuity. So no, it's, uh, it's not continuous at x equals pi over 2. So you're not going to, Rolle's theorem is not going to apply. So there will be no point in the interval from 0 to pi where the slope of the tangent line is actually equal to 0. Okay, there's no horizontal tangents in there. You can see that visually. There isn't one. 
Okay, so after playing around with Rolle's theorem, we get to what we need, the mean value theorem, which is a high-powered theorem that you'll use all over the place if you kept taking math. It's often going to rear its ugly head in the middle of proofs, okay, so we need it. Um, visually, again, this is, it's an easy concept to wrap your brain around. Let me just show you visually what it looks like. Um, we have A and B. This time the, F of, the endpoints don't need to be the same. Okay. And maybe we have this going on. What's it saying? It's saying that uh, the slope of the secant line between A and B, this uh, value here, will have a... Uh, there'll be a point on the curve such that the, the slope of the tangent line will be equal to the slope of that secant line, okay? given some criteria, basically the criteria from Rolle's theorem, except the endpoints don't need to be the same. Okay? So you see the slope of uh, the secant line, which you can find, um, so the slope of the secant line is um, f of b minus f of a all over b minus a, and then it's saying that the, this will equal the slope of the tangent line of the curve at this point C. Okay? That's the mean value theorem in a nutshell. Okay, let's write it out in its, uh, its word form. So if F is continuous on the closed interval, from A to the B, and then differentiable on the open interval from A to B, um, then there exists a C value in that open interval from A to the B such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Okay, so this time I'm actually going to be a little bit more rigorous with my proof. I'm not going to do a hand wavy thing. Um, usually when I'm, as a math student, whenever I go in to read a book, so I always have you guys read the book hopefully before you watch my lectures. Um, before I go in, well, yeah, so when I go in and read the book, I'll usually, I'll usually skip the proofs. I'll skip reading the proofs, believe it or not, okay? Then if I, I need kind of help remembering it or kind of just are curious about the functionality, I'll go in there and I read the proof, but I don't read it like just read it, right? I, I have a piece of paper besides me, and, and what I do is kind of go through and collect facts, and then I number the facts. I go, number one, uh, F is continuous. Number two, F is differentiable. Number three, you know, and, and that's the way I do it. And it helps me organize my thoughts a lot better because these proofs, when they're written like this, I think it's more just for recording facts. It's, it's for passing down information through generations. It's about uh, making sure that somebody who reads this 500 years from now is, is going to get that information perfectly, okay? So uh, it's good for that, but it's not good for simple communication, in my opinion. Okay. But anyways, this time I'm actually going to kind of be a little bit more rigorous about my my uh, proof. Okay. So uh, what, what have I supposed, first of all? So I've supposed um, f of x is continuous, on the closed interval from A to B, and uh, f of x is differentiable on the open interval from A to B. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is create a new function. Okay, so uh, create a um, function. I'll call it h of x by combining h of x, uh, by combining f of x and uh, the uh, secant line between a and b, that, that blue line I drew above there. Okay, so this thing right here, I'm going to combine f of x and that thing. 
and uh, the secant line from um, a comma f of a to b comma f of b. Okay, so what does that look like? Um, well, first, maybe we, we just need to know what the equation of that secant line is. So let me go back up there and kind of extract that. Right? So it's going to be, um, if I use this first point, okay, the first point on that line is a comma f of a, and then the slope um, is, of course, f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. I can put that into my point slope form. So I'll end up with y minus f of a equals um, this m thing, f of b minus f of a all over b minus a times x minus a. And then I can simplify that, and I'm going to write that below here. Um, uh, so I have uh, h of x is going to be f of x and then minus the secant line. Okay, So it'll be y equals, um, uh, and above, what I, the last step I need to do is add f of a to both sides. So y equals um, f of b minus f of a all over b minus a times x minus a and then plus f of a. And that thing is the secant line. Okay, uh, so what are some things to note about this line? Well, I'm basically going to go through and show it. it, it it's going to satisfy all the rules uh, theorem criteria. Okay, so um, I note h of x is the combination of continuous functions Because the equation of the secant line, it's just a line, so it's continuous everywhere. So uh, h of x is a combination of continuous functions, and therefore continuous on this interval. Okay. f of x was presumed to be continuous on that interval. And then uh, the equation of the secant line is continuous everywhere. Okay. Also then... Um, because the any line is differentiable, we could say that h of x is also differentiable. Um, f of x was presumed to be differentiable on a to the b, and uh, the equation of a line is differentiable everywhere. Okay, so h of x, the, the difference between these two things is di also differentiable then on a to the b. Um, uh, finally then, uh, we also note the endpoints, h of a. Okay. So if I plug a into that formula above, I'll have f of a minus um, f of b minus f of a all over b minus a times a minus a plus f of a. a minus a is zero, so this part here will just be a big zero. And then you'll end up with f of a minus f of a, which of course is zero. And then look at h of b. So that is f of b minus, this time it's f of b minus f of a all over b minus a times um, b minus a plus f of a. And in this case, the b minus a's will divide out. You'll be left with f of b. And then I have to distribute this negative through. So it will be minus f of b plus f of a and then uh, minus f of a which, of course, again, equals zero. In other words, um, h of x satisfies Rolle's theorem. Okay. Well, okay. So what? Well, let's apply Rolle's theorem. Let's look at the derivative of h of x. 
thing. So the derivative h prime of x will be, if I scroll back up and look at h of x, it's going to be the derivative of f of x, okay, f prime of x, minus um, the derivative of this line. If the derivative of any line is just going to be the slope, right? Because you have y equals mx plus b, and you take its derivative, y prime, it's just going to be m. Okay? So in this case, what is the m? The m is this f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. So it'll be the minus f of b uh, minus f of a all over b minus a. Okay, Rolle's theorem says that uh, h prime, there, there exists a c value such that h prime of c is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, from Rolle's, there exists a c in the interval from a to b such that h prime of c is equal to zero and thus we can replace zero h prime of c with zero and and uh, this equation of course we're, we're replacing that with zero and then all the x's with c's so i have f prime of c minus f of b minus f of a all over b minus a and then you could solve for f prime of c. And then that's that's the uh, theorem. That's this, this thing back here that we were trying to kind of show. Okay. So hence the mean value theorem works. Okay. okay. Uh, again, the problems at this point in the book are just, you know, does the thing satisfy the mean value theorem? And if so, find the C value such that, you know, F prime of C is equal to the slope of the secant line. So let's look at maybe one or two of those. Um, let's see how many examples I have. Yeah. Okay. So F of X equals X cubed plus 2X, and we're on the interval from negative 1 to 1. Okay, so uh, first is we have to go through this continuity and differentiability issue okay, on the interval from negative 1 to 1. So is it continuous? Well, yeah, certainly. It's continuous everywhere, so it's definitely continuous. All polynomials are continuous everywhere. Uh, is it differentiable? Um, again, yeah. Um, all polynomials are differentiable everywhere, so yes. Uh, so let's find the derivative. F prime of x is going to be 3x squared plus 2. Okay. And then we want to find the c value. Uh, so I need um, f of b. So I'm taking the a and the b from the interval up here at the top. That's a, that's b. So I'll have f of 1 minus f of negative 1 all over uh, b minus a. Okay. So this will be uh, 3 times 1 squared plus 2 minus 3 times negative 1 squared plus 2 all over 1 plus 1. That'll equal 3 plus 2 is 5 minus, I guess, 5 again. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, Oh, jeez, what did I do wrong this time? It's x cubed, right? So I, I was putting the derivative. I'm supposed to put the original function in there. Sorry. Okay, so I have uh, 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 minus negative 1 cubed plus 2 times negative 1. All over 1 plus 1 is 2. Um, that'll equal... Uh, 1 plus 2 is 3, minus negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, all over 2. So this will equal 3 plus 3 is 6, all over 2, which is 3. Okay, now I want to find the c value where the derivative is equal to that. So I'll go and put um, this and set it equal to the derivative. Okay, so 3 equals 3x squared plus 2 and solve. 
3x squared equals 1. Okay, so x squared is 1 third. So x is plus or minus square root of 1 third. Let's make sure those are in the interval. Negative 1, yes, those are both in the interval. So those will be the c values that, that the mean value theorem guarantees. Okay. Let's look at another. So f of x equals sine of x on the interval from 0 to pi. Okay, so 1, is it continuous? Well, yeah, it's continuous everywhere. Um, is it differentiable? On the open interval. And again, yes, it's differentiable everywhere. Um, so we should be able to pull this off. So let's look at the derivative f prime of x is cosine of x. I also need the um, secant line slope. So again, I go to the interval for pi and zero, the endpoints, zero and pi, all over pi minus zero. Um, f, uh, sine of pi is zero, and uh, sine of zero is zero. So that would just be zero. So I need to find the c value in this interval such that cosine of x is equal to zero. Okay? And clearly that's just going to be pi over two. Okay, okay uh, so that's the idea for the mean value theorem. Rolls theorem, very high powered theorems, okay, which creep their way into all kinds of proofs that we use to prove other theorems that we use in mathematics to do other things. <laughs> All right, so we'll leave it at that, and as usual, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.